Hello, hello, hello everyone, as I dive with you all once again into yet another horrible case, continuing our investigation into the questions of whether or not the worst monsters are no longer hiding in the darkness, but out here in the light, the technology beaming right into our faces. I'm sorry, I gotta jazz up the intro every now and then, cause the rest of the video usually gets pretty bleak, so you gotta start high before we start getting low. One of you messaged this case to me on Instagram on a particularly good day I was having. I read about this case, then the rest of my day was kind of ruined. But hey, it's making for a video, so I appreciate that. As we are diving in. Today, we are looking at the atrocious crimes of a troubled young man who targeted children using their favorite online games and social media platforms, taking advantage of their youthful innocence and trust to groom them for his sexual advances. In March 2021, a pale, thin, 23-year-old man named Adam Sayer sat in the Liverpool Crown Court on trial for making inappropriate sexual advances on children after grooming them on popular gaming and social media platforms. But even more terribly, this was actually his third time in a courtroom facing criminal charges for sex crimes against minors, and only now, for the first time, was he looking at jail time for his crimes. Little seems to be known about Sayer's history from public record, though it would later be revealed in the same courtroom that he had endured a pretty horrific childhood. During her oration, defense attorney Natalia Cornwall told the judge Sayers himself has had a difficult upbringing. He was taken into care from a relatively young age. He himself has suffered abuse whilst in foster care, and he also had to deal with the death of his mother. He now has no contact at all with any of his family members and is effectively isolated within the community. And from his struggles in isolation came a very troubling predilection. Allegedly, by his early teen years, he was engaging in sexual acts with children and coercing them to perform sexual acts on him. When he was only 14 years old, he was caught and convicted of sexually assaulting a child, but at the time, he only received a warning for this offense. That is insane to me. Yes, he's 14 years old, but he was caught and convicted of assaulting a child and he just gets a warning. Because of how the British legal system works, many of the crimes committed by minors are effectively expunged after five years, which may have applied in Sayers' case. Because this initial transgression did not seem to be taken into much consideration as he faced trial for his second offense in September 2020, once again for a case related to his sexual interest in a child. In May 2019, Sayers recorded a video from a window in his apartment on Poplars Avenue in the small British town of Warrington of a young mother and her child walking down the road. In the clip, which he uploaded to Facebook, he made sexual comments about her toddler, including stating that he would like to have sex with the child. Word of the very public video managed to get back to the mother who reported it to the police. She later said of their experience being filmed in this manner, I am scared to walk down the street as I am reminded by the incident. I cannot sleep as I have nightmares and horrible thoughts. Sayers' legal team told the court that he had ADHD, autism, and learning and speech difficulties, likely hoping his various conditions might inspire leniency in his sentencing. They also argued that he had exhibited acceptance of responsibility as well as remorse, claiming he was not a risk because he had never been convicted of anything. Once again, that might technically have been true since he got off with a warning for his crimes perpetrated as a minor. <laughs> I mean, clearly th this whole, you know, expunging the record uh, of people uh, when they're minors it didn't seem to really uh, be beneficial in this case because it actually might have helped uh, indicate a developing problematic pattern. Ultimately, he did not serve any jail time for this offense, though reportedly he may have been meant to spend 10 weeks in prison followed by two years on suspension. A uh, suspension, I assume, is a British equivalent of a probation. He was given a five-year sexual harm prevention order, which prohibited him from contacting boys online, and it required him to notify and comply with the rules of the sex offenders register within a certain time of his release. Upon Sayers' release from the court, audaciously, even that same day, he was back online. Somehow, even more empowered than before and now actively pursuing children online under the username Juicy Gamer. His actions suggested he had hoped to groom victims on popular interactive gaming platforms like Fortnite and Roblox on Xbox. I've actually never played Fortnite. I, I do stream on Twitch, twitch.com backslash Arya Intavong, although I've never played Fortnite. Uh, it doesn't seem like my cup of tea, although I have played Roblox. I like the noise that it makes when you die in the game. Ooh. 
Not long after he began his search, he locked on to an unsuspecting 7-year-old boy and a 12-year-old boy who seemed to have been his primary targets over the next few weeks. In messages that began in the first days of September 2020, Sayers reached out to the boys on Xbox Live, convincing them to connect on other gaming sites and social media. Later interviews with the children and their message board history across their multiple streams of communication helped piece together a very disturbing picture of how Sayers preyed upon each of the young boys. Sayers introduced himself to the boys merely as Adam, asking for their age and if their mothers were home. In one case, after learning he was just seven, Sayers propositioned the child to come over to his house to play football, aka soccer, giving another option to continue playing on other online games like Fortnite. Over the next month, Sayers made impositions such as giving the boys his phone number to call and enlisting them to play Fortnite, Roblox, and have Xbox party chats with them. He even gave the 12-year-old child access to his credit card to buy games for them to play together, with which the boy ultimately bought 200 pounds worth of goods online. He told the boys to change their Xbox names to play with him, and it had to be our secret even from their parents because Adam could be in trouble if anyone found out. Sayers instructed the 12-year-old to turn on his camera as they played, messaged him on Instagram to send pictures and videos, and at one point specifically requested a shot of the child in just his shorts, a photo that was later found saved on Sayers' confiscated phone. At points in conversations with the 7-year-old boy, Sayers asked him to meet up, told the boy that he was fit, that he loved him and missed him, that he wanted to go on a date with him, and that he wanted to be his boyfriend. About a month later, on October 5th, 2020, the 12-year-old boy's mother noticed a strange credit card attached to her son's Xbox gaming account, a card registered to an AG Shipley, as Sayers was reportedly going by Adam Shipley, at his new home address in the town of Newton Lay Willows, only a few minutes away from his last apartment in Warrington. When confronted, her son said the card belonged to his new online friend, Adam, at which point she immediately asked to speak to her son's new digital acquaintance. When the mother spoke to Adam, he tried to tell her that he considered her son a friend and had only bought him one game for £7.99. And when challenged with the true amount spent, which was nearly £200 more, he tried to claim that he was bad at numbers because he was autistic. The boy's mother was able to find Sayers' TikTok account, where she was disturbed to learn that the person talking to her son was a man in his 20s who had a grid full of videos of young boys, none more than 10 years old. However, even without the boy's mother contacting the authorities, Sayers' time had already been running out. He was on suspension, ordered by the courts to provide police with necessary details of his personal life as well as sign up for the sex offender registry, and he had complied with absolutely nothing. After authorities were informed he had followed underage girls on his Instagram, they were sent to his home to investigate, where they looked at his phone history and messages to disturbingly uncover that he had been grooming as many as three young boys and added several other minors with his Instagram account. In addition to the 7-year-old and 12-year-old boy, the third victim was thought to be a boy younger than 11 who had been sent messages over Instagram between September 13th and 16th. When arrested and brought in for questioning about the three young boys he had been talking to, Sayers had no comment about two, but claimed he thought the third child had been an adult. As someone who has watched many an episode of To Catch a Predator, I've heard that line far too many times from these perverts. He did admit to three counts of violating his sexual harm prevention order, failing to comply with the notifications requirement of the sexual offender registry, and violating his suspension. Back in a courtroom less than a year later, once again, where we first set our scene in March of 2021, a judge made sure Sayers spent time in jail for his crimes against children, though some might argue they were still lenient. Even Natalia Cornwall, who represented Sayers on defense, said he had only himself to blame for not taking advantage of the leniency he had been granted the year before. In the past, Sayers had refused to attend rehabilitation treatments in complete denial of his issues. During this trial, his defense argued he was finally accepting that he did have a problem, and it was that he did have a sexual interest in children. The defense once again argued that the myriad physical difficulties and emotional trauma Sayers had experienced over his life had contributed to his unstable condition. I completely understand and sympathize with emotional trauma, but just because he has endured emotional trauma does not give him the right to try and dump a shit ton of emotional trauma on a bunch of other kids. Upon making her ruling, Judge Rachel Smith sentenced Sayers to two years and eight months in prison for his crimes, describing them as a persistent breach risking serious harm, due to the fact that for this crime alone, he had been pursuing these children for weeks without any hesitation. 
suspension. She added, these were clearly multiple and more serious offenses starting on the day of the imposition of the suspended sentence order. Sayer's new sexual harm prevention order was mandated to last for at least the next seven years. He would remain on the sex offenders register for life and his iPhone and Xbox were forfeited and destroyed. In addition, he was mandated to pay at least one of his victims a surcharge. However, she noted Sayer's social isolation did make him a vulnerable individual, adding, it appears that there is some developing understanding by you of your sexual interest in children, which provides some prospect of rehabilitation in the future. Thus, perhaps, he was sentenced to only a few short years. This 12-year-old boy is still suffering emotional repercussions from the trauma of his abuse, according to his mother. For his own safety, his parents required the boy to delete all unknown contacts from his Xbox and was forbidden from using Xbox chatting features. They also make frequent checks to see who he is playing with. Due to the pandemic, limiting kids' ability to be with friends and socialize normally in school, Taking away even that form of communication has made the boy's life more difficult. His mother describes, This has had an impact on his emotional well-being as he now feels like he can't be trusted to play games and interact with others on his Xbox. He gets upset and feels that we don't trust him anymore. He doesn't understand the severity of the situation or what could have happened. We don't expect him to because he's only 12 years old. He thinks we blame him, which breaks our heart, as none of this was his fault. He is so trusting. He genuinely thought Mr. Sayers was his friend. He's been left upset and confused. In a statement, the mother of the seven-year-old wrote to be read at Sayer's trial on behalf of herself and her son. She best illustrates the damage an online predator can cause. She said of her son's experience at the hands of Sayer's manipulation, turning what should have been his outlet for fun with his friends during a dark time into an even darker nightmare. As my son is only eight years of age now, this has completely destroyed his innocence. I have had to explain things to him that he shouldn't have to understand at this young age. Going through this has caused him to become withdrawn. He is cautious of adults now and seems to have lost trust with others. I'm worried he will never get back to the confidence young man he was. And in the end, the unknown long-term effects of the boy's trauma, their loss of trust in others and in themselves, the emotional and physical punishment and isolation they endured because of the digital violations done to them is perhaps the most devastating and greatest crime of all in this case. Like I said earlier, you know, we cover a lot of dark and not fun cases, but I mean, I mean, these ones involving children are always they're always the ones that are, that are least fun. And so I have nothing really to add for these boys, at least that, you know, they didn't come into any physical harm. That said, in the meantime, thank you as always for keeping me company as I cover these not so fun cases and stay safe online.